Hello, this is Dirk DeYoung from King Luma, and in this movie I'm going to try and give you a really brief introduction to the King Luma Deviance product. So I'm here in Final Cut Pro, and I have a Deviance effect applied as a transition. So let me just play through that effect. Okay, so you got a look at that effect, and a lot of stuff going on there. And um, let's take a quick look and break it down and just kind of show the controls and how it works and stuff like that. So I have the transition effect selected here. You see these on-screen controls. These on-screen controls, they don't make a lot of sense unless you do this. Do you see this deviance graph parameter here? You enable that, and now you're going to be able to see what these controls are. But first, let's before we do anything with those controls, let's scroll through this effect. And one thing you'll notice is that this graph is, you know, obviously it's progressing. It's showing you where you are within the effect. And one thing you'll notice, too, is that when... At a point like this, where it's right on the gray line, you're not seeing so much of an effect. The effect isn't very strong, but when it goes either significantly below or significantly above that line, it's mostly below in this case, um, you see much more of an effect. So basically, the way it breaks down is everything below this timing group, color effects, all these FX groups, blur, move, displacement TV, they are processes which feed into this graph. So they are the deviance effects. They are the things which are following this sort of randomized animation that I'm going to show you a little bit more about in just a minute. If I want to adjust one of these effects, like let's say, okay, I realize I, I don't like that blur so much. There looks like a certain softness. So if I, if I park on a place where I see that it's a fairly big bump, either above or below that gray baseline, that's going to be a good place to adjust this effect. So I can go here to the blur and say, okay, there's the blur completely mixed to 100. There's the blur all the way turned down. Um, you could also just disable it like that. Um, so, you know, the graph helps you to find a good spot to adjust the effect. Um, another thing that the on-screen controls in the graph give you here, you see how in this case it starts with almost no effect and then it goes to the midpoint where there's a bit of an effect and then it fades back down to almost no effect again. Well, I could adjust the beginning. Let's say I wanted to start with some effect already there. So there, that's gonna, when it first hits, it's gonna give you a big flash, a big blast. That might be a cool effect to have. Um, I can, of course, adjust the mid, and I can adjust the end as well on screen. These controls correspond to strength mid, strength start, strength end. Um, these deviance timing controls. Another thing I can do if I just don't like the overall pattern here, this deviance seed is sort of like re-rolling the dice. It's, you know, it's a randomly generated animation pattern. So you can see I'm clicking there. And um, that's useful to have, give you a new, a new pattern to work with. This frequency boost, basically if I turn that way up, you're getting more sort of deviance hits during that same period of time. And if I can turn it way down, you're gonna get less. So that, that's another thing that can be adjusted. And what's going on in this effect, if I actually, let me just show by turning it down in the beginning and the mid. So now you can see we have almost no effect, but we do have that, that transition going on. So the things that you see above this deviance group are independent of this deviance timing. And we have two things. We have this scrape going on, which is um, in this case, those horizontal lines, which are using the color underneath. I'm just going to disable that. And you have this other transition. So right now, in this case, it's a wipe from left to right. So you see the options here. You can roll, wipe, crossfade, or cut. Um, basically, if you want to cut, you just turn transition time down to zero. And one thing you'll notice here in the, in the middle of the graph, you saw this little blue shaded area. And that's giving you an idea of the time period during which this transition is occurring within the effect. So that's my wipe. And that's also going to be my scrape time. And so I can sort of turn this up and down. But then what's more, what I can do, if I go back and add my deviance effects back in to this, What you'll find is it's often useful to be able to adjust this rhythm in relation to this underlying transition. So in this case, I'd like to have sort of more extreme deviance going on 
you know, while this wipe and this stripe are going on underneath. So I could keep clicking this seed button um, until I get something like that. But even more direct way to do it is you see this down here. This is a handle that you can grab onto and you can actually offset the time. So there I'm putting a big bump right in the middle. And kind of just, just go ahead and adjust that to 100%. So now if I scrub through that part of the effect, I should see kind of more of a big flash, which is kind of what I want in this case. So this graph, you know, allows you to make nice adjustments to the effects without flying totally blind. It's really hard with this kind of randomized effect to, um, to adjust something like that, you know, without, without the aid of something like this graph. So, you know, the idea is that you have that nice sort of crackling energy of randomized animation, but it's not totally out of control. You actually have the kind of control you'd want to be able to use that, that randomness you know, to, your, to your purpose and to the, get the aesthetic of the effect that you really want. So once you've made these kind of adjustments, you usually disable this graph because you probably don't want that as part of your effect. And if I go back here and play through, 